Hey, me, Chris Boy, and I'm going to review SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom. Quite possibly the most iconic Nickelodeon game and one of the well known most licensed games of all time, along with Simpsons Hit and Run. But this game was released on October 7, 2003, and was made by Heavy Iron Studios and was published by THQ. And this game somehow has been popular for nearly 20 years! But it was released on the GameCube, PlayStation 2, and the OG Xbox. But now, let's jump onto SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom. This game starts with Plankton trying to make a bunch of robots to take over Bikini Bottom, but for some reason builds a switch into them that has an obey and a don't obey side and he puts them on a don't obey side. And while that's happening, SpongeBob and Patrick are playing with robots and they wish they can have real robots to play with, so they wish for it and then BAM! The next day there's actual robots everywhere in down, in down below Bikini Bottom. And it's not only up to SpongeBob but also Patrick and Sandy to take over the, the robots. This game is a 3D platformer collected upon, but li like the last game. But instead of collecting nine letter tiles that spell SpongeBob, you need to collect a certain amount of golden spatulas to get from stage to stage. Except Jellyfish Field, which is this game's equivalent to Bomb Bomb Battlefield. And now that I think about it, this game is really, really similar to Super Mario 64. Like the levels in this game feel either really open roidish or linear, the golden spatulas are like the stars, and both having a creative and great hub world where they're both created because they use incredibly great locations like Bikini Bottom, or physically the streets in SpongeBob to be more specific, and everyone lives in Super Mario 64's Peach Hub Castle. And yeah, basically they're both creative and they actually function really, really well. But now we're just getting off topic. And this game's levels, like Jellyfish Field, are so good because they're really easy to go through, however they're really big, and it ends up making it feel like a really open worldish like game. And then it ends with a fun but easy boss fight, and then a slide to go down that's just, you know, a really, really fun slide. And speaking of the slides, in this game, the slides are so fun, where they're just fast and easy to go wait through. Kind of like in Super Mario 64 for the third fucking time. But the best slide in this game is easily the entirety of Sand Mountain or the slide in Gula Games Pier. Also, the sliding mechanics were later messed up in the SpongeBob game, Drumline, and Truth of Square, which whenever you slide, you can just stop holding forward and you'll just stay still, which really, really sucks. Which, funny enough, that game was the last SpongeBob game Heavy Iron Studio ever got to make. But that's for another time. And also, this game has a sequel, believe it or not, called the SpongeBob SquarePants Movie. No, not that one, this one. But that's for next time, and this game controls greatly because it's a smooth game where there's a bunch of abilities too, like the Bubble Bowl and the Bubble Crusade new thing, and then there's the Bubble Helmet upwards, and then the Bubble Bash which goes downwards, and the Bubble Wand which is basically like a default attack that works really, really well. There's also three characters to play as, SpongeBob, Patrick, and Sandy, and they all play uniquely with Patrick being the heaviest character, Sandy being the floatiest character, and SpongeBob being, well, in the middle. Then the way to get these characters is to go through the bus stops and then you go to one of them, press I, and then bam, you're one of these three characters, which you can either be two at a time at a bus stop in a certain level. For example, at the bus stops in Jellyfish Field, you can either be SpongeBob SquarePants or Patrick Stone. And then there's the enemies like the robots, the Tikis, the Duplicatotrons, and the Jellyfish. But the boss fights are simple but great. A good example being the first boss, King Jellyfish, where it's really easy with the fact how, you know, it's really slow. However, somehow it still manages to somehow be fun. However, there are awful areas, like Helps Force because it's visually bland as hell, where it just looks like shit green or puke black, and also it requires uh, way too much backtracking, and yeah, no, it just really sucks. And then there's the Brawl Warrior Puzzle, which. Oh my god, this thing just made me want to cut my penis off in English fiction. Like, I swear, I do not want to suffer through this again. But yeah, at the game's core, it's a genuinely really well game that was really well designed, and overall, I have to say that it's great. However, there are other aspects that in this game that are pretty, pretty important, like the graphics, music, or sound effects, or voice lines. So let's talk about those elements of the game, shall we? This game looks great to me, where all the character models look to rip straight out of the show, where they look dead on to their appearance in the show. And this is the first game that does not use the same piece of fucking Mr. Krabs stock art. But yeah, the same Mr. Krabs model is based off that piece of stock art, and it actually looks really, really good. Except for it, it comes at a greater price, but trust me when I say this, you will hear about later. 
But Overcake did not always look good. He went mystical, dehydrated SpongeBob. But however, they did kind of use the exact same SpongeBob model a few times in games like the movie game Creature from the Krusty Krab and Who for Square. And the levels look good, but in the far distance of the levels, you can see really, really low poly models. However, at least the levels look accurate to the actual show instead of doing the Lord of the Flying Dutchman route where Bikini Bottom looks like a drug alley the entire way through. In, except for Cub Forest in this game and the levels that got destroyed by robots, all the levels in this game look dead on to the show. And also the effect of what the characters do, like an attack or something, bubbles will appear, and it feels really good when the bubbles appear, because it gives it a nice little, like, satisfying click in the game. It feels weird, or sounds weird, but yeah. And then there's also the animation side of things, like how the characters move, and it's pretty good for the most part, except for the transitions. The transitions in this game for animations are not smooth whatsoever, they kind of just like, cut to the next animation if you're walking or running and just do one action and go straight to the other. And yeah, the cutscenes seem to look good as well. And sure, the cutscenes are not well lip synced whatsoever, but that's not why I love them. The reason why I actually love them is because they look like a cartoon. They move like a cartoon. And now, let's talk about the audio portion of things like sound design, and sound effects, and audio lines, or just the music. This game's sound effects are great, where they sound really good and responsive, and also like Spongebob and bubbly like sounds. And then there's the voice actors and voice lines, where most of them must have everyone come back except for Norman and Mr. Krabs, and as a result, there's a big bad thing about Mr. Krabs. And then there's also the fact for the voice lines of the characters you play on, while they sound good at first, then they get repeated over and over again, like, God forbid, if I have to get a more Spongebob lines, I'm actually gonna whip my hair out and swallow my kidney. And then there's also the music, which, I don't know what to say really, it sounds like Spongebob music, but that's about it. Overall, I completely recommend this game over all of the other Spongebob games. Seriously, Super Sponge, Legend of the Lost Bachelor don't have anything in this, and I will say, Revenge of the Flying Dutchman is pretty, pretty close, but... The Battle of Kingdom just blows every single one out of the water. And yet, if you have an Xbox 362 and an OG Xbox copy of this game, that, ma that means you can play the best version of this game where you don't have to have the same memory card thing or anything. But yeah, that's about it. This game wins an 11 out of 10 for me, so that's really impressive. But yeah, that's a bit. See you all later. Peace.